<laughs> it's the remedy the husband loves to give the wife. Because after it's worked well, he says, Phew, she's come back to me. <laughs> I'd lost her for a while. CPR see, see, is a remedy that suits women more often than men. Um, and in acute work, that's what we're talking about. It's a situation in which the woman's overworked usually. That's usually the causative factor. They've overworked. They've driven themselves beyond the point of recovery. And they've probably done so for a while. So I say it's acute, but actually its prodromal period is long, usually. And it's quite often a situation where a woman has children to look after. In a traditional family of a hundred years ago, um, Margaret Tyler writing a, writing 50 years ago. Now it's more now, time passes, doesn't it? Margaret Tyler writing 70 years ago called it the washerwoman's remedy. So here's the, here's the working class woman who has a large family and has to work as well to keep the wolf from the door. So she's doing the washing and she's got her kids. They're probably hanging on to her, um, her apron tails as she's treading in the tub of suds and warm water. And she feels like a uterus is falling out as she's doing that. <laughs> a uterus that's worn from having had many babies and maybe contains one presently. And she's going to lose it in the soap suds any minute. And she's got a sallow, ye yellow, a yellow saddle of sallowness across her face. All this is yellow and she's tired and she wants to tell everybody to get the hell out of there and leave her alone to have some peace. And she wants to wail. And if she te she's telling you about, she wants to scream. She wants to hold on to things. Because otherwise she's just going to keel over. And she's got to make the kids tea and put them to bed. And clean their nappies in the washing up and in the washing bowl as well. And it's just too much. And as for sex, well, forget it. There is no way. So that's a very, very extreme picture. Uh, but we meet a less uh, extreme version of it today, just as yesterday. Worn out, too many cares. CP has a strong sense of responsibility, but it's just been overtaxed. And the most terrible state eventuates, one of, one of indifference. She knows she loves her kids. She might know she loves her husband. But her husband's become just another damn kid she's got to look after, and the love's gone. Where there was a light, there's now a shadow. I guess that's the easiest thing to about, say about, the quickest thing to say about sepia. That indifference to loved ones is probably the primary characteristic, along with sagging feelings. Feelings that things are going to fall out, especially the uterus, a lot of sagging there. Vaginal region just doesn't bear up at all. A lot of sensitivity. Sensitivity to contradiction, sensitivity to odours, sensitivity to noise, sensitivity so that she just wants to be let alone. And the other things as well that can come up. It's it's it. There's there's often a lot of flushings, and, you know, by which I mean uh, flushes of heat. Uh, so it's a big remedy in the menopause. You know, we, 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 the menopause is an opportunity to to uh, rediscover other aspects of one's creativity because so much as in traditional traditional. Um, Society, so much creativity has gone in children, but children have left now. And you're not going to have any more children. And so much opportunity to, 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 as we say, reinvent yourself. And um, that's a hard moment for a sepia individual, because she's spent everything. And the menopause is usually uh, associated with, uh, with extreme discomfort, not flushings. It's a major remedy here. Not really first aid, but sort of, you know, ish. A lot of skin symptoms can come up with sepia. So it's just you know, a very wide area of, of, uh, of usefulness, polycrest remedy. <laughs>